so one of the classes that I teach is um, the social studies methods course. In other words, teaching elementary teachers how to teach social studies. And a phrase that you'll hear me say in that course often is, if we just learn dates, who won the war, who fought in the war, um, we're missing the point. The point of social studies is to talk about people. And so the phrase you'll hear me say is humanize history. It's, it's, it's an interesting story. Um, my uncle was drafted to the Cuban military and my grandmother was unwilling to allow her son to um, fight in Fidel Castro's army. And so she said, no, you're not gonna report for duty. Um, and in those days, they, they sent you the uniform and when you reported, you were supposed to go in uniform. And, and all along, as the weeks led up to his departure date, she said, no, you're not gonna fight in Fidel's um, army. And uh, there was no plan for him to not fight. So the night before, my grandmother snuck into his room, took his uniform, and burnt it. In the morning, he wakes up and he says, where's my uniform? Where could it be? He goes looking everywhere for it and knows there's one person who could have done something with that uniform. So he goes running to, to my grandmother, his mother, and he says, where is it? Where is it? And she says, you don't have it anymore. And I don't think you should report to a communist army without the uniform that they gave you. He says, what are we gonna do? She says, we've been talking about leaving for so long. I think we should do it today. Because if not, tomorrow might look pretty ugly. And so without a plan, they decided that that day they were going to go to America in search of the quote unquote American dream. My grandfather was a very hardworking man um, and he sought work in, in the States and couldn't find any work in part because of his um, monolingual Spanish speaking abilities. And so um, someone told him to go down to this office, which is now we know is the welfare office, and they would help him establish himself, but they tried to give him something. And he didn't want that given to him. Having come from a communist government, he felt like there was probably strings attached to whatever was being given to him. And so he said, no, no, no. But they were the most helpful, though they didn't give him what he wanted, which was a job. And so unfortunately, he took his own life within a, a year of being in the United States. And so now my family um, found themselves without a father, uh, with very little income, um, and s searching out the American dream. And people um, and have often asked, why does that story influence you so much, Jessica, if you didn't actually live through that? How can that influence what you do, both as a student and now as, as a professor? Um, and the truth is that students who have lived a similar story wouldn't ask that question because they know that that's the reason that you do everything as a child. Because even though you didn't physically live that story, that story was told to you time and time again. And that's why you had to get an education. And that's why you had to do, make the best of every opportunity. Because if we were in Cuba, you wouldn't have any of these opportunities. So you better work hard. It's important that we humanize um, not only history, but that we humanize the educational process. It, it's, I, I don't believe that there's a, a right way of teaching um, any given topic, but especially multicultural topics. Um, the idea is that we're talking about differences, and differences are hard. To, it's a hard to engage in dialogue of differences um, because you might not feel safe within those differences. And I think that boils, that, that comes back to one of my main goals as a professor is um, to create relationships with my students. And it's hard to do in a 10 week time frame, in a university time frame, but we have to model that um, for our teacher candidates so that they can understand the importance of creating relationships with their own students. I often go about this um, by not lecturing, but rather having um, conversation and to whatever extent possible, an engaging conversation um, in, in, in the classroom. And unfortunately, school has taught us that it's the teacher's job to ask questions, and it's the student's job to answer questions. 
And that seems kind of ridiculous to me because if we can't encourage students to ask questions, then what, what are we doing? And so a, a launching um, place for my classroom to often begin is students' own questions. And that's hard to do as a professor sometimes because you don't know what questions they're gonna have in advance and you might not have all the answers to the things that they were asking about. That's a way to demonstrate lifelong learning and where we all go out and say, you know what, this one seemed really important and we didn't have the answer, so why don't you look into it and I'm gonna look into it as well and let's revisit it next time. So classroom is, uh, my classroom time is very much seen as a, a dialogue and, and not your traditional lecture.